How's it going, everybody? It is November the 3rd right now. Um, unfortunately, I plan to do this tutorial, which is going to be uh, how to Photoshop yourself to look like a ghost. Um, that kind of scary, creepy-looking, hollow-eyed kind of ghost. Um, I was trying to get this up for Halloween. However, I was on vacation. I did take my laptop and I did take all my equipment. Um, unfortunately, my charger stopped working while I was out of town. And... Uh, couldn't get out to a store to get a new charger so even though I had um, the tutorial and everything ready to go for Halloween unfortunately I was not able to upload um, and get things going so um, we are a few days late for Halloween but what the heck anybody who's still in the spirit might still want to do this so let's get started so first thing you're gonna want to do is take a selfie as we always do in these tutorials um, I wanted to get something with uh, a white uh, robe or a white nightgown. I think the white nightgowns work the best for this. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have one, so I used a white robe that I have. So once you got the photo that you're happy with, you are going to want to duplicate your photo. As always, always keep an original um, just as the background layer. Keep that original untouched uh, just in case we have to go back for it for any reason. After you've duplicated that original layer, you're going to want to grab the burn tool and start burning around the eyes. You really want to get the heavy eye look by burning mainly below the eye. I'm going, I'm circulating the eye um, just to give it that black eye look, but the most important uh, area we want to cover here is underneath the eye. Once you get the dark shade underneath and around the eye that you're happy with, we're going to want to grab a black and white adjustment layer and place that on top. And all we're going to want to do here is bring out the reds and the yellows a little bit, depending on what uh, type of tone you want with the black and white. Um, I'm bringing out the, the yellows and the reds. So once you've adjusted your black and white layer, um, use this time to determine whether or not the areas around the eyes are too dark or too light. If they are too light, go ahead and, con and uh, continue burning around the eye. If you're finding a little bit too dark, which I am here, you're just going to want to reduce the opacity. I'm going to drop it down to about 75%. Now just to help give that dramatic, scary uh, look to this photo, we're going to want to create two layers. Let's first create a solid layer and fill it black. And we're gonna wanna use this to create a dark vignette effect. You've seen these in uh, some of my previous tutorials. Basically, we wanna create a clipping mask uh, and uh, grab a feathered uh, round brush and just plop it in the middle and that's gonna give us our dark vignette. Now you're going to want to create that second layer and fill it white and this is just going to give us a washed out clouded effect um, to really make this effect stronger you can even throw on a clipping mask there and, and throw like a some kind of scatter or clouded brush on there I'm not going to do that here because I don't have the brush on my system right now but that is an option right now we're just going to give it a solid white fill and we're going to reduce the opacity to about 15 to 20 percent and let's not forget to rename the layers to keep things organized. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity of that black vignette layer to about a 75% just to reduce the really heavy black. Once you're happy with the general tone, you just want to go in and perfect that vignette effect. And I'm just going to lock these two layers in place so we don't accidentally select them. So once we're happy with that, uh, we're going to want to start working on the eyes. So basically we want to grab an outline of both eyes and we can do that using the lasso tool, the pen tool, uh, you could even use the oval tool um, and you'll get the, you'll get a similar effect with each. It just depends on how accurate you want to be with the shape. Um, in this case, you don't have to be that accurate with it just because it is, the effect I'm giving here is more of a hollowed eye effect, like the, you're just left with the sockets the eyeballs have been pulled out um, so we're just gonna get a rough outline of the eye and create a new layer um, and basically 
make selection out of that and fill it. Uh, so you now you'll have a new layer with the eye outline on there. You can fill it any color. Try and I like to try and pick a darker color, so I've got black here. It's looking a little bit gray because it's underneath the white and the black layers. Uh, we're going to want to double click that layer and open up the layer styles palette. The two styles we're going to want to focus on are the bevel and the emboss and the inner shadow. So you're going to want to use an outer bevel style and start adjusting and experimenting with the, uh, the different settings here. Um, we're going to want to increase the depth a little bit. Uh, the size is going to have to go up a bit, but we want it to look like it's part of the skin. Once we're happy with that bevel and emboss, let's go into the inner shadow and just start adjusting the size and the distance. You want to ensure that the blend mode is set to normal because by default it would be set to multiply and we're not sure if you, you'll really be able to see it um, with the color you chose. The second thing you're going to want to make sure that you're paying attention to is the color of that uh, the inner shadow. So we want to make sure it's a different color than the original color the color of the layer. Um, so if they're both black, you're not going to be able to see a difference. You'll want to change it just, just to identify the color, change it to anything. You can do white, blue, yellow, whatever works, and then we'll adjust that color back to black or gray and change the color of the uh, background layer to um, maybe a lighter a lighter gray or a darker gray. Once you're happy with the effects that you've just applied, uh, you can go in and start adjusting the actual size and the shape of the eye. I'm finding this one a little bit too big, so I'm just going to go in and shrink the size a little bit. When you're feeling comfortable with that shape and size, go ahead and duplicate that layer and do a edit, transform, and flip horizontal. Now what we want to do is go ahead and blur those eyes a little bit so they don't have such a sharp edge around. So we'll go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. You don't want to blur this too much, just give it a slight blur. I'm doing about a 3 pixel radius just to help soften the effect. And we'll just continue adjusting the size and the shape of the eyes and play a bit with the angle until we're happy. Let's go ahead and duplicate each eye and we're going to want to remove any layer effects and layer styles applied to these layers. After we've duplicated each eye, we're going to want to grab a brush which you'll probably have to download from a website such as deviantart.com. I'll place a link in the description below of a um, recommended brush you can use for this. But basically we want to give the eye um, a look like it's it's falling or it's dripping something. Um, so basically you can use any splatter or scatter brush. Um, again, I'll leave a link in the description below. And basically you want to take the smudge tool um, with a fairly high strength. I've got mine at 73%. Um, you don't want it too high. You might want to play between a 60 and a 70% range. Um, and just start pulling the eye down, just smudging the eye down. You don't want to smudge the whole eye, not the top, just the bottom. And give it almost like a, uh, a dripping effect, like there's tears or blood falling out of the eye um, or being scratched down the face. You want to ensure that you're not doing this to the layers with the layer styles and effects on them because each of those effects that you just applied will be transformed. So make sure that you're doing this on the duplicated layer where you have removed all effects and styles. Now let's go back to that layer that you applied the burns around the eyes to and let's start distorting the mouth a little bit. Um, let's take that smudge tool and use the similar brush and just start smudging the lips down a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a blurred, uh, distorted look. 
If you wanted to, you could also use the same effect as we used for the eyes for a mouth. Just create the outline of a mouth and uh, basically have it like a hollow mouth that where the ghost might be screaming. And same idea, um, some kind of liquids or scratches falling out of the mouth. Next thing we're going to want to do is duplicate the background copy again, so that original layer. Let's duplicate that and let's apply a motion blur. So you'll uh, do that by going to filter, blur, motion blur. Make sure that you're doing a horizontal blur and just uh, go with the settings that you're comfortable with, that you're happy with. I'm going with about a 150 pixel distance but go with whatever you're, uh, you're happy with. We'll want to move this layer above the layer with the burns and reduce the opacity. So we just want to give a bit of that uh, shaky look to it. And we don't want to lose any of the details in the face, um, those burn areas that we just did in the eyes and the mouth. So we're going to want to create a clipping mask and uh, we want to expose the background of the face itself. So leave all of the hair and the edges with that uh, motion blur still apparent on it, but let's clear up the main facial area. And I'm just cleaning up those burn areas, just uh, basically by throwing a clipping mask on that layer where we applied the burns and just exposing some of the original image. So the faces are looking a little bit too clear for me to look like a ghost. So I'm actually going to go back to that burn layer and I'm going to start burning more areas of the face just to help, just to make it look a little bit more burnt and a little bit more um, haunted. And we're really going to want to darken up the lip and the mouth area here. And I'm just revisiting the eyes here. I'm going to apply another slight Gaussian blur to them just to help them feel a little bit more natural. And doing a little bit more smudging around the outline of the eye. I'm just noticing that the eyebrows seem a little bit too detailed here, so I just want to smooth those out and blur those out a bit. Um, so I can do that by either using the smudge tool or the blur tool. I've got the smudge tool selected, so I'm just going to go ahead and start blurring the eyebrows a bit. Now we want to explore how to give the face a little bit more of a scarred, abused look. Um, I think... I want to use the burn tool again, so just use the burn tool on top of that uh, original burned layer where we applied all the burns. And I'm using a barbed wire brush here just to give it kind of a stitched look. I will uh, leave a link in the description below so you can download that same brush um, and get the same effect. But you can really do that with any of your own brushes. Um, again, this is just a barbed wire brush that uh, I'm going to want to just start applying to certain areas of the face just to, again, really bring out the hauntedness and the uh, abusive, or sorry, the abused look of the face. So again, revisiting that burn tool and just applying some more burns to the facial area just to give it that more haunted look. Let's really bring out those lips and apply some more burns just to the mouth area. So I'm still finding the eyebrows a little bit too dominant. Um, so I'm going to actually go in and narrow the eyebrows a little bit. I'm going to do that by using the liquify filter. You want to ensure that you have the uh, layer that's being most exposed selected. So that's the layer that we applied all of the burns to. And we're going to want to hit filter and liquify. 
now you can see all of the burn effects um, that we've actually applied to the face without the black and white adjustment layer. So once you're in the liquify filter, you can really use any of the tools to your left. Um, I'm just going to use the smudge tool and just start pushing down on the eyebrows and narrowing them uh, just to, yeah, just to make them a little bit more narrow and a little lower on the face. Hit OK and that's it. That is how you give your portrait photos a ghost effect. Um, there's tons of different options and different tutorials out there. This is my approach to it. I'd love to see how you guys uh, do yours um, and how they've turned out. Please comment them below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and yeah, I'll continue to shoot these tutorials out. Um, and at some point we'll be doing some vlogs. So stick around and we will see you next time. Thanks guys. Thank you.